ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and welcome to the continuation of our Noob Tips Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain series. Today we're going to be executing a side op. And unlike many who will tell you that there's a best way to do something, I strongly am against that. There are a variety of ways to execute all of the missions and side ops in Metal Gear Solid V. It's a game that very much is encouraged, very much encourages player choice and diversity in player play style. So that's what we're going to focus on throughout the course of the playthrough. I'm going to go through, show you guys some actual tips, some tips and tricks that I use to help execute a mission a little bit more efficiently and also to have a little bit more fun along the way because I feel that Metal Gear is a tactical experience. It's now an open world tactical experience and to get the most out of it, using tactics is often key. So I'd like to go ahead and start off any side op by queuing up some music here in the helicopter. And then we're going to go ahead and actually select our side op from the side op list. I have one side op that is currently available. I've completed all these other ones, and that is a prisoner extraction mission near the Eastern Command Post. So we're going to go ahead and move to that side op location, and this is really the start of your tactical decision making. It's very important that you understand as a player how to read this map, and it's probably one of the easiest topographic maps to read. Unlike modern maps that exist today, on paper or even on a website which use contour lines, this is just 3D. So there are contour lines, but it's really just a 3D model. And wherever there are light parts, those are the higher parts, and the dark parts are the lower parts. This is actually really important because a lot of Northern Cabal, this area of the map, is just all rocks and desert. So it may all look like a bunch of mush, but in reality, this right here, that's a passage. That's a passage that you can navigate through, and you know, knowing all of these different routes is really going to help you make that final decision for how you infiltrate in any given AO during the course of a side op. And a lot of this information will carry over into how you could execute main missions as well. So for me, we're going to go ahead and choose this landing zone. It's just down the road from our communications post. And if we take a look at the territory here, this is actually really important. You should always analyze as much of the map is available and as much as much of it that actually exists, you know, let's look at the buildings because we're looking for a hostage. I highly doubt he's just going to be out in the open. And from what I can see, we have two buildings that are actually fully enclosed. We have this map right here, and we also have this one right here, which looks like it did at one point actually contain some resource materials that I much have gathered. Now, luckily for me, in previous side ops and some of the time that I've spent in free mode, I actually have been to this location. In fact, I use C4 to eliminate a couple of their radio towers. So I am slightly familiar with the layout of this camp and that is definitely a benefit. It's also another reason for going out and actually executing a side op in my opinion. Side ops help you learn the lay of the land, they help you become more familiar with the different zones, Northern Cabal in this case, and they make further side ops a little bit easier. Now, in terms of our loadout, Again, a lot of this is player preference. You really have to equip yourself according to your personal playstyle. But let's talk a little bit about that. First and foremost, I think that Snake's Camo is one of the most overlooked and important decisions you can make. Um, each of the camo uniforms that you're going to have available, of course, some you're going to unlock by performing research back at Mother Base, they all have their own, you know, sort of specialty. Areas which they are going to help, um, help Snake blend into better than others. So in this case, um, the Desert Fox is more about sand or soil. In this situation, this is a base that is located very much inside of a canyon. There are a lot of rock, there are a lot of rocky surfaces. We're going to go ahead and use the Tiger Stripe. Now, you can see the last mission I went on didn't end so well. So we're going to go ahead and re-equip his Tiger Stripe camo with a scarf to get rid of some of that blood and clean Snake up a little bit. You always got to go into a mission smelling fresh. You definitely don't need any uh, blood of past enemies or past friendlies upon you. Um, now, of course, your buddy, in this case, I'm still just rolling with D-Horse. I also have D-Horse equipped with a battle dress that I researched back at Mother Base. This actually gives him bulletproof ceramic plates within that armor, which is awesome in case we need to do a hot exfiltration or things just go south and we've got to get out of there without even completing the mission. D-Horse is going to be slightly protected, which is always a bonus. Of course, if you had a vehicle, you could go ahead and use that. At the forefront of Snake's loadout is, of course, all of his equipment, his weapons, his support weapons, as well as his items. Now, I'm still running the AM-MRS-4 as his primary lethal. 
Um, that is because it is one of the only suppressed lethals that I currently have access to, at least that I'm able to, you know, I don't have anything else that I can research that is suppressed. It is only a 5.56, five, so headshots are recommended if you do have to use it, but for me, I usually go about trying to do as much of a mission non-lethal as possible. That being said, you will see that I have researched the Renoff ix sr sniper rifle it's a 762 soviet sniper rifle it does not have the best zoom it's only 4x it has a lot of bullet drop off but for a lot of the missions where you're looking to eliminate a single target and you want to do it lethally that is definitely the way to go it's also a great way to kind of get into long range engagements and understand just how effective different weapon systems um, with or without suppressors and different types of ammunition are going to be um, when engaging at distance Secondary weapons, we've got our tranquilizer pistol and our bionic arm. Support weapons, snake comes standard with hand grenades in the magazine. The magazine, of course, is a great distraction tool for luring enemies out into the open or into any place where you might need to, you know, take them down so you could further interrogate them for information. Hand grenades, I don't use them. They're there. I could probably take them out of my weapons if I needed to. However, C4 and smoke grenades are two things that I would research as soon as you possibly can. C4 is great for a lot of the missions that require you to take down, for example, like we did previously at this exact same location, a couple of those radio towers. You can go in stealth or loud, however you choose, plant the C4, and get out before detonating. Smoke grenades are just a nice tool for a little bit of escape tactics. Maybe things go awry. You're pinned down in a small room with enemies outside. Pop a smoke, X trait with your target and uh, make it to safety in terms of items you've got your night vision and phantom cigar as standard i also have researched the box which everyone has researched it's one of the first things ocelot makes you research i haven't really used it i imagine there's some place for that box to be a really effective stealth tool but i haven't discovered it yet and when i do we'll be sure to make a video on it so let's go ahead and roll out now of course you can set your drop time you can do asap 0, 0600 or 1800 Honestly, early game as a new player, I strongly recommend, I advise you just do ASAP for all of your side ops early on. The great thing about doing it just, you know, on the whim is that you don't really know what sort of situation you're going to go into. You don't know the environmental conditions until you're there. And that's great for learning how to adapt. You might have to go in at night. You might have to go in at daytime. Maybe a sandstorm is going to spawn. Avoid using the Phantom Cigar, I would say, early on. And just play it as it lies. I think that's a great way to learn a lot about the game and a lot about how to perform certain tasks within different environmental conditions. Plus, it's a lot of fun. I love randomness. Why set the time of day when I can just go in at dusk and, you know, finish the mission as it's getting dark? So we're going to roll in with the helo, land just where we were talking about. As soon as we go down, we're going to pop open our iDroid and we're going to set a bunch of map markers. Map markers are another great tool that I like to use for more than just, you know, setting a heading. We'll be down in a moment here. Coming up to D-Horse. Got the tunes playing. Now you notice we are infiltrating rather close to the road, so that's something you definitely want to be aware of when you make your first move here, is understand where you are on the map. Let's go ahead and drop off. Before we even get on D-Horse, let's reassess the situation with our iDroid. Okay, so we've got the communications post. Now, I actually have really good knowledge of this actual area, and that's hugely beneficial to me. Now, you may not have the same knowledge that I do, and that's fine, but I'm just saying, recognize locations when you go to them and try and remember where they were on the map and remember some of their important details for me this is a really fun memory game and in this case i'm completely aware that this building you can't even go inside of it i actually climbed on top of it to eliminate a tower so i'm going to go ahead and assume make a uh, conscious deduction here that this building that has mine and rental that i've obtained in it is going to be where our hostage is being held i'm going to set a marker there i'm also going to set a marker for the outside perimeter of the AO, where the road is, as well as where I'm going to enter it. Looking at the topography of the map, I can tell that this is a ridge that I should be able to navigate and move on in. And you can see we've also got a lot of enemy, you know, uh, pieces of this base here. So we're going to start to make sure that as soon as we can see any of this, we're going to pull up the binoculars and we're going to start making reconnaissance. Let's go ahead, hop on D-Horse and advance. So we got those markers set. Now there's another thing, again, that I'm aware of based on previous knowledge, and that is this entire vicinity of this map has a vehicle patrol. There's a truck that is carrying supplies from base to base. So you definitely want to be aware of that. 
There's also some other things to be conscious of. In this case, we have a mortar, a mortar emplacement at this checkpoint. If things do go south and the enemy is completely aware of your presence, they will call in support from nearby mortar bases. So if we exfil to this same location under enemy fire, there's a good chance that we won't even be able to extract in the helicopter because of a mortar strike. So keep that in mind. You may need to take this out in advance if you're concerned about the mission not going as stealthily as you planned. Or you, mean to need, you may need to take it out on the way back. Just small things I've learned over time. You know, and like I said, this isn't some uber pro epic tip. I don't claim to be the greatest Metal Gear Solid player ever. In fact, I'm actually kind of clumsy when it comes to this game. But I have a lot of fun learning from my mistakes. And that's kind of just something that humans do. So, uh, you know, take advantage of the open world that Metal Gear has offered. Make use of all the tools. Think outside the box like I've done with the markers. And, uh, you know, the game is going to... Be a lot of fun that way, and you're really going to be able to test your own personal skills. So let's move in close. We're going to go ahead and dump D-Horse off right at this ridge here. Like I said, we want D-Horse to be nearby for extraction, so I'm going to tuck him away into this corner here and tell him to stay put. Stay back. Stay back. D-Horse will stay right there. So let's go ahead and get Binox up and try and identify some of the targets that may be inside the base here. Now you have to remember, depending on the time of day that you actually move into any AO, it's going to alter the the route of the guards and what they're doing. Their behavior is going to be completely different during the daytime than it would be at night. So, Of course, nighttime also does give us the advantage. It appears that there is no one actually at that spotlight. That's kind of odd. Maybe they think there's no reason to be there. Or maybe that soldier has now gone out on foot patrol, so we want to be cautious. I'm going to use this sort of wrap around up here to navigate. Again, there's another mortar inside of the enemy base. We definitely want to be aware of that because that is something that could cause us trouble if we have to hot exfil. Keep those things in mind. Machine gun turrets are something to be very aware of. Trust me, I ran into one of those when I was trying to escape and it shredded me to pieces as well as D-Horse. Poor D-Horse. So there's the marker that we've set. You can see there's some sort of a light and a radio station inside of there. So that just may be what we're looking for. Now, there is something to take note of. I mentioned it, you know, I mentioned that I think you should do things on a random basis. Don't always go in at night. Don't always use NVGs. Don't always go in, in the daytime. Don't always use whatever. Um, you know, I'm not telling you how to play the game, but keep in mind that when you do an activity repetitiously, so say I decide that I'm always going to go in lethal stealth. I'm going to use small arms fire with my AMR here, and I'm going to eliminate targets um, as I see fit as I move into the AO. Eventually, the enemy is going to recognize that someone, some operative, is moving into their bases. He's, they're killing all of their men with a suppressed 5.56 weapon, and they're going to counter that. They might put on helmets. They might put on body armor, meaning that your 5.56 is now not nearly as effective. And you have to upgrade to a larger caliber, which may not be suppressed early on. These are things to keep in mind. The enemy is always going to adapt. That's another thing that has made Metal Gear... Um, Metal Gear Solid 5, quite special to me. There's a lot of these small mechanics. It's all in the details. Kojima has definitely taken that to heart. Now, before we go ahead and drop down here, which may seem like a great way, I'm almost positive that this upper sort of route here is going to be patrolled in some way or another, so I want to be cautious about this. Let's go ahead and drop down. Let's get into a crawl almost immediately, make sure that we're staying as low as we can. It's a pretty heavily lit area. We also have another little guard post up there, so we definitely want to avoid that area of the map. I'm going to climb off the side here and get down and dirty, and hopefully we can just crawl our way right into this base before being identified. They seem to be having some sort of a meeting, so maybe we just came at the perfect time. It's, it's Team Crumpets here at the Soviet camp, or should I say... Um, Tack and vodka, probably, considering the Russians. Well then, I imagine that this guy there with the shield is a prime example of what I was talking about. Um, they definitely become aware of some of my strategies, and it looks like the shield is there to counter those strategies. So this is going to be interesting. I'm not sure how we're going to go ahead and handle this situation. But let's go ahead and get ourselves hidden in the grass here in case this guy comes around. Now, if we can get him to turn around without disturbing also everyone else in the AO here, we might be able to take him out.
Like so. Okay, so this is bad. We actually have a patrol coming in. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that is that truck that I mentioned that I knew was in the AO. That's that's them. So we're going to get out of here quick. This is rough. This is actually really rough here. This guy's moved up to that base up there. Um, oh man, this is going to be close. It does appear this guy has also got an on um, that light switch, which is no bueno. Let's see if we can't get this guy to look another direction. We're making our move. We're making our move. Here we go. Here we go, guys. We got this. This is going to be nice and clean and quick. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now, I'm going to breathe a sigh of relief because that actually went exceptionally well. Again, a lot of that was down to previous knowledge of the area, which is why these side-ups are so much fun. Like I said, they really help you build knowledge of what the enemy is doing. Now, that is going to change over time, so don't think that... It's going to be so easy peasy the next time you go. And you saw they already tried to counter me once. And I'm actually fairly early into the game. So I can't imagine how much more difficult things are going to get um, once you really start to mess with these guys. But let's go ahead and load up our passenger. We're going to go ahead and set a waypoint for our exfil. We're going to go ahead and maintain knowledge of this road. I definitely want to keep, you know... Okay, I guess they're going to do that way. I thought we would just take him back to the base with us, but it looks like that's what they've decided to do. <laughs> that works, though. Let's just go ahead and exfil now. Now, of course, you could actually stay in free roam. That is the great thing about side ops is you can just go from side op to side op. But I'd like to actually head back to Mother Base and do a little bit of research and development. Um, I actually have a couple highly skilled soldiers that are recently obtained from some other side ops. So I'm going to want to head in, make sure that they're assigned to their proper roles, and see if we can't gain some more cool gear to go out and complete some more side ops. Now, like I said guys, side ops I think are a great thing to focus on early game. Um, they give you a nice clear objective, they're a great way to study the layout of the land, to understand how to read the map, and to just, you know, really become more efficient at the different mechanics that the game offers. But like I said, keep in mind that things are always going to change and the enemy is always going to adapt to whatever you do. It is going to become more challenging. Um, but that, that's really it for me. I hope you guys learned some stuff in this video, some of the mechanics that I like to use, some of the in-game metas that I like to use to make myself a little bit more aware. Again, really, those markers, they are hugely useful. Map knowledge, again, is very important, your awareness level. As you saw, that truck that I mentioned that I knew was on patrol here, it managed to show up just in the nick of time, and luckily, the base wasn't a little bit more lively. Had that been during the daytime, there's a good chance they would have stopped. It would have caused a lot of the guards to move out of their standard patrol scheme. They could have came down to that building, and things could have came a little bit more difficult. We did have the guys at night. I have to say that mis missions seem to be, more often than not, a little bit easier at night, but do remember that eventually the enemy will adapt to that. First and foremost, have fun with this game. I think it's very easy for Metal Gear to become frustrating. You fail, you're not able to play the game in the same playstyle that you were looking forward to playing, you can't go full stealth. Just learn to adapt and take things in stride. Um, remember that this is a game that is highly replayable. It's okay if you don't complete every single mission full non-lethal stealth. You know, do it stealth, do it lethal, do whatever you see fit early on as a new player. Um, Again, not telling you how to play, just saying ways that you can avoid frustration and you can then, you know, spend more time learning the game, developing your skill as a player and adapting rather than just being really irritated. So me and D-Horse, we're going to bounce out back to Mother Base, do some research, hopefully get some more cool gear. If you guys have any questions for me regarding what I talked about in this video, the nature of side ops, anything like that, anything personally for me regarding Metal Gear, leave it down in the comment section below. And of course, those of you out there who are maybe more skilled or perhaps newer players learning just like everyone else is looking to do, feel free to share any tips and tricks that you've discovered along the way. Let's make sure that we have a wealth of knowledge down in the comments section below. Make sure that this Noob Tip series is the best possible series that it can be from a video perspective as well as from a discussion perspective. Get out there, get geared up, grab D-Horse, and complete a side up.